G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video on drive bands, bullet drive bands or projectile drive bands. And um, we've got a little range of, of projectiles in front of us um, and I suppose I'll start with the odd one in the end is the odd one in the end because it's something that probably does get called a drive band, it isn't really. And this is a little bit of an anomaly because it's coated. But this is a hard cast lead projectile. It has grooves in it which look like drive bands, they're grease bands. And although there's probably some similarities, they're made to be filled with the correct grease, not any grease, but the correct grease to go with the gunpowder using and the speeds and all those sort of bits and pieces. But a grease to go in there to help stop a, to help that, that lead, hard cast lead, get down the barrel with doing all the things it's supposed to be, sealing to the barrel and, and cutting into the, into the rifling, but the, having a, that right grease there stops the lead from melting so much and sticking to the bore. So it's really made about trying to get a hard cast lead, large hard cast lead down a barrel fast, efficiently, um, with less friction by running some grease in those grooves. So that one I wanted to start off with because it'll get confused with it. Over here is a range of monolithic projectiles, which is where, dry, where you'll find a true drive band. Um, in the various range that you really will see in the map. And they go from very obvious little drive bands, multiple drive bands, singular drive bands, to less obvious in the way of bore riders with a slightly larger butt and things like that, which are sort of being a drive band as well. Um, and what's it all about? Well, the simple bit about a drive band is what it's trying to do is make up for the difference of a monolithic projectile which doesn't obdurate or doesn't expand to the ball when it's when it's when the explosion happens behind it a lead core projectile or a lead projectile it's soft it's malleable it gets pushed hard it expands a little bit it seals to the ball and off it goes so yeah, good sealing um, it will go as far as that pressure will go so it'll expand start to grip push forward all the things work nicely in a lead core bullet in a monolithic bullet, so solid copper, solid brass, solid one of the alloys, solid steel even, you'll find in projectiles, they don't. They will get moving rather than get expanding. Um, they're a lot harder, so they don't want to expand. Um, and that means that because a barrel bore, or the bore in your rifle, is a bore in, the, in, a, in a barrel, so the, the rifling and the bore itself, are a nominal size, which means they are plus or minus a few tenths or hundreds of a thou either side of smaller or larger. Now in a lead core bullet, that's not a problem. It expands to the bore. In a monolithic bullet, it doesn't expand. So unless you have exactly the right size bullet or a little bit too large a bullet, I suppose is the other way to do it, you're not necessarily gonna seal properly. So the way around that, um, rather than just making it large, there's going to be lots of friction and you're going to lose some efficiencies because you've made it too large to squeeze down there or it's under, it works well in just the right size but otherwise it's too large or too small, is to have what's called a drive band, which is essentially a piece of the projectile, piece of the bullet that is a little bit too large, a tiny bit too large to make sure it fills up all the bores. Well, 99.9% .9 of all the bores are going to be filled up with it. Um, but it's only a thin piece of that. It's not the whole bearing surface, not the whole flat sides of the projectile. It's either one little bit or multiple little bits of what's actually talking, what it's on there. Um, and that means that what's going to happen is just that little bit is going to pick up and get cut the grooves into it. And then it gets turned into, as we're talking about, a drive band. But it's only that little piece, so it's not going to cause too much friction. It seals nicely against the bore, it cuts the groove in it, and off it goes down there. So then, like I said, there's various ways of doing that. You can do that with uh, multiple, where you've got lots of grooves in the sides, which is trying to end up where you have a very, the bullet is supported front and rear. Um, and so that it's nicely supported to go down the bore and it's got all these grooves to where they're only fine little grooves generally, or a couple of bumps type thing, but there's not too much friction, um, and the, but it's still guiding the bullet project, or the projectile properly down the bore. Um, or you can go to the simple stuff, which will be running the likes of a bore rider. A bore rider is where the majority of the bearing surface of the bullet, the flat sides of the bullet, are made to fit 
the inside dimension of your rifling. So they're not really going to touch the rifling, or if they do, only a little bit, but they're made to go to that, the, that size to just smoothly fit down there. That's doing the supporting there. And then the drive band is either part or it is the back half of your bearing surface. So a little bit of it, where there's just a little tiny fine bit sticking up, um, the likes of the cutting edge, which just has one little dry band on there, that's made to grip in that little piece there. Um, or there's bore riders that will just have the last eighth or the last quarter of the bearing surf, which is that little bit larger, and that becomes its drive band. So, and then there's various ways. You'll see amongst here from the, the larger scallops in the middle to all, all sorts of different things to try and create this same thing. Basically, it's more about what's not there rather than what it is there. But the drive band is the bit that's large enough to seal the bore and take the grip on the rifling to get the projectile spinning properly to get it down the bore and sealed properly and all nice. So that's what your drive bands are about. Um, the, the positives are you're going to sometimes end up with less foul length. There's other things going on with fouling. But the, the logic of it is you're going to end up with less friction because there's less rubbing heavily on your rifling or less being cut into your rifling. Um, and for that, gain some extra speed out of this projectile because it hasn't had to rub so far so the powder can get more acceleration happen as it comes out the bore. Um, and in a supersonic form, well, I think it's supersonic, but certainly in your, your, your shorter to long range stuff, not going to ELR stuff, there ha is no negatives from what I've seen. They can be very accurate. Uh, they have some extra speed to a degree, sometimes at least. Um, and then there's lots of other subtleties and nuances that go into obviously a bullet design. But generally you're talking about something that if you're talking drive band bullets, something that's been pretty thoroughly worked out. And in, like I said, in your short range, which is I'm talking for monolithic bullets in your 600 yards to probably even out to your mile, they can be very, very, very efficient, very effective um, and work really well. Past that point, I have seen some issues. So there's another side to drive band bullets. You've probably heard me mention before is I prefer a smooth side of the bullet. And that is because I have seen, um, and the, the more drive bands, the more I've seen of it, where they almost are like they get hit with a parachute. They just stop and fall out of the sky. Their ballistic coefficient changes quite dramatically in a downward sense. Once they go in, I think it's subsonic flight where it happens. Um, and maybe it's to do with the transonic zone. Maybe there's some other things going on. There is some bits and pieces that happen um, with different lumps and bumps and things like that as they go back through sound barriers. That's a very complicated science. But with extra lumps and bumps on things, you can definitely have the bullet gets affected more by the shocks. Maybe there's that. Maybe there's some other bits and pieces from the center balance and center pressure and all those things. But what I have seen is that the smoother the shape of a bullet projectile, um, the better they do in ELR. So extreme long range and ultra long range, when you're pushing it out there, the smoother the shape of that bullet, the better they travel through the air at your extreme long stuff. My logic is, is when the bullet slows down and comes back into what I call fluid dynamics, or what is called fluid dynamics, but that means that rather than having the supersonic cone and rather than the extreme speed of thousands of miles an hour um, when a bullet is traveling supersonically, which whether that's a sonic cone or that's just the speed of things means you just skip over the lumps, essentially. Um, when they come back to fluid dynamics, so subsonic travel, the air comes in and wraps heavily around the projectile and then those lumps and bumps become a big issue. So in my experience, at least, if you're choosing a projectile for extreme long range or further, so you're going out into subsonic flight, then I would stay with the smoother sides. The smoother sides work better. The less drive bands, the better. Um, there are some that still work very well out there. I will tend to go with none. Um, this is a bullet I designed myself, this big one in the middle here. Um, and I, it is a bowl rider, but a very smooth transition over to the bowl rider surface at the back of, or over to the, the drive band, essentially, at the tail of the bullet, um, which is, there's other logic attached to moving your center of pressure to places and things like that. But the main thing is it's a very smooth shaped bullet is what I'm actually chasing. That smoothness is what creates more efficiency out at the extreme long range. I'm by no means a true bullet designer. I've done some tinkering, fairly expensive tinkering to end up what I was getting, what I was heading for. But 
there's a there is a lot to it and i suppose that's a bit i'd finish on in this conversation is these are my tests and my information comes from practical use where i've actually taken a projectile that worked really well at one distance and trying to step it out and it did okay or it did great or it did terrible and actually seeing it being at a test out there but bullet design is still to some levels it's 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 by no means complete by no means do we know everything there is some extreme things that are very hard to test at the speeds that we see things and the gyrographic stabilities and things like that. Very, very hard to generate in a true sense and test it. And we're still learning flat out. As you'll know from all the different names that they have of different bullet designs and bits and pieces, they're still learning. They're still coming out with ideas. They're still trying things. So eh, listen, there, there's, I'm sort of at the, where the rubber meets the road a little bit. And certainly what I've seen, I don't tend to use them for what I do doesn't mean they're not great for other things, hunting bits and pieces in normal distance. There's still some very good logic to go with at the likes of a dry band bullet. Anyway, guys, that's my overview. Um, hope that didn't get too wordy. I've made some sense. Glad you checked in and we'll catch you next time.